Thank you for joining us for another Reunited, where our goal is to reunite the body of Christ with the gospel of the kingdom of God. <clears throat> My name is Corey Pritchard. It uh, looks like we have Pastor Mark Dwayne Burroughs here uh, on the line. We have uh, Emerson Winfield Jr. We have Bridget Pritchard on the line. And we're going to go ahead and get started for tonight. Uh, we're coming off of becoming a law abiding citizen in the kingdom of God. Uh, for that session, for me, uh, I never know how long it's going to be. I don't ever you know, plan that stuff out. So I look back and I was amazed to see that we actually began in January. So beginning in January, finished out in August. And again, it's always for me a, a growth situation. Uh, these these lessons, they stretch me or I, I'm actually coming in and learning this information, applying this information. So for me, it was powerful. I got a lot of really, really good things out of it. Uh, so what I'd like to do to begin tonight is is before we transition into our next topic, I would like to open this up uh, to see uh, if the individuals that are here uh, are able to be able to share uh, anything that you may have been able to get uh, out of that. I want to see uh, if you could just give a, a point or two or whatever you'd like to say. You know, maybe it's something you, you agree with. Maybe it's some things that maybe you didn't agree with. Uh, maybe there's some things that you felt like uh, by hearing that it made you go in deeper into the word of God and actually find out more in that area, something that you felt like you, you didn't know. And maybe that changed you in some way. It was helpful in some way. Uh, maybe you felt like there was some some clarity, you know, some areas that maybe you felt like you would have liked to have some more clarity in. And it's not really clear uh, exactly what it is that we were uh, looking to do and, and what how, how we can actually make that practical and, and, and applicable to, in our lives. So I like to hear about that, too. So I want to make sure that we can start that way. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm not going to put anybody on the spot. I'm just going to open it up to see if there are any uh, comments, any words. I'd love to be able to hear feedback from everybody that's here, but I'll go ahead and open this up right now. And I just want to double check uh, on my audio. Uh, is is are you guys able to hear me okay? I know we have, uh, looks like we have uh, three or four people that, that are on here. And uh, I just want to make sure you can actually hear me okay. Yeah, I can hear you okay, Corey. Okay, okay, great. So thank you very much. And again, I would like to hear something. Again, we spent 30 weeks <laughs> as a, um, in in that in that topic, uh, can can anybody just give me anything as far as what they what they got out of it? Did you not understand? Did you understand it? Like what what was it that you actually uh, gained uh, from the times that you actually listening in listening in on becoming a law abiding citizen of the kingdom of God? Uh, just let me. I'll go ahead and start. I I was trying to give someone else a chance, but I'll just uh, begin to say that uh, I think one of the things that was con confirmed is that. Uh, that number one, uh, we have dual citizenship, that's for sure. And understanding that I am uh, my citizenship, who, who I really am, is, is, is a citizen of heaven. I believe I've been called here to bring the, the culture of, of heaven to earth, where in the past I always thought it was the opposite. We're trying to take earth to heaven. I was a strong believer in that. I think through our discussions that some things have been confirmed as far as God's original uh, ideals, God's original purpose and plan for man uh, was to invade earth with heaven, uh, to be able to operate in the dominion and the power that God has given us, uh, understanding our true identity, uh, who we are in, in, in Christ, understanding that we are priests and kings here in this land. Uh, and I think one of the greatest things is that uh, confirming that, uh, understanding that there's a grave, grave difference between religion and uh, the, the, the teaching of Christ, uh, and understanding that, that at our Lord and Savior, he was a uh, he was an advocate of carrying out his father's purpose and will. And uh, I think one of the things that uncovered also is that we uh, one of the biggest problems he had was with religious people. 
And I think that's one of the biggest issues we deal with now are religion and traditions that really stop the move of God. Well, not necessarily stop the move of God, but can hinder hinder uh, people's way of thinking. They've been taught certain ways for so long. When you go back to God's original message, they think it's a new message. And believe me, by far, this is not new. When you begin to talk about the kingdom of God, when you begin to talk about what Jesus taught uh, and, 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 and the kingdom, uh, from my from a little bit of my understanding through the years that I've uh, really focused in on this, I understand that uh, it is so vital that we get our identity right, number one. Number two, we preach the message of the kingdom, as it tells us in Acts 28, 30 to 31. Paul, when he was locked up in a house of rest, if you read it, it's, it's, it's clear as day. He said, Paul preached the kingdom, and then he taught the things concerning Jesus. Now, if you don't think that's two different things, I don't, I don't know. I would beg you to go back and look at it again. Again, it said, Paul preached the kingdom, and then he taught the things concerning Jesus. So I think that's a great place for anyone to begin to look at. Taught it not only that one particular scripture, but throughout the Bible. We're not talking about one scripture. We're talking about uh, scripture after scripture, line upon line, precept after precept. Here, a little there, a little rightly dividing the word of God. If you rightly divide the word of God, I don't think... You could come up with anything other than uh, Jesus and and uh, his message of the kingdom of God, which was so many different scriptures. I don't know how many there is exactly, but I would want to like to say this as a closing that uh, I've heard uh, uh, the great late uh, Miles Monroe say one thing is that uh, it's so powerful that the Bible is about a king, a kingdom and a royal family. And if you don't have those lenses on looking at the Bible in that direction, then you will have a different direction that will carry you in. If you don't see it as the, as the word of God being about a king, a kingdom, and a royal family, then you will come up with uh, different types of, uh, I guess, ideals and theories and thoughts and so forth and so on. So uh, that's what I have right now. I'll, just, I'll be quiet. Let someone else uh, come in. Thank you. Awesome. So thank you for your feedback. And I know, uh, uh, Mom, you jumped in uh, after I asked the question. But my question was, uh, we actually went through becoming a law abiding citizen in the kingdom of God. So that was uh, 30 uh, messages is what that was. Uh, I'm not sure how many of those that everybody had a chance to listen to. But I know from the people that are here uh, that you were here for a majority of those. And what I ask is uh, if you could just share uh, what you actually got out of that. Uh, either something that was uh, impactful, uh, that, that helped you out, something you didn't see it in that way before, or maybe something uh, that you disagree with. Even it's a case where uh, maybe there's an area that you felt like you would have liked to hear more detail about is something you wanted to be cleared up some. Just want to make sure I'm hearing some feedback. Anybody else? Okay, well, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, so we're just gonna uh, continue. If you would like to say something, I would I would love to be able to hear from you. It's just a case where, again, uh, so if you don't know, you know what it's like on this end for me, uh, then I would really love to be able to have more of a, a classroom environment where I can see people face to face, right? I can read uh, body language, I can see facial expression, like you know, all of those things. Uh, but on this end, like I'm looking at a computer screen and even if so, you know, even if you guys have your, uh, your, your, uh, your image up, your face up where I can see you, it still doesn't give me, you know, enough feedback to really know, is this really sinking in? Like, is this a case where uh, we really understand uh, what is really going on? So I want to make sure that, that I am trying to do a better job of, of initiating that, drawing that out as much as possible. And uh, gl glad to have you, brother Greg G. So, uh, where yep. we're at Let right me. now. Okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Emerson. 
Yeah, let me also add, uh, I wanted to add real quick before you get too far in, uh, that there is still, that we are still under, uh, our, put it this way, God is a God of laws, and there still are laws in the kingdom of God. And I'm not talking about the Mosaic law. Uh, when we mentioned the word law as our conversation, I think we had uh, yesterday or the day before, anytime you've mentioned the laws, people always go, their mind and their thoughts go back to the Mosaic law. But God is a God of laws. And so I think that's what was trying to get across more than anything in, in, the, in the time that we've spent, that God is a God of laws. There are still laws that we are to abide, or that we are to abide by uh, in God's kingdom. Uh, and if you had a lawless kingdom, boy, it would be a mess. And so I think that's really uh, not to speak for you, but I think that's one of the things that you emphasize or try to get across to people that would listen is that there are still laws. And like I said, automatically, when you mention that word law, everybody wants to resort. I shouldn't say everybody. Let me speak for myself. At one time, I would resort to, no, there's no laws if the question was asked. We're not under law. We're under grace. And uh, But that's not the question you were asking, I don't believe. I believe the question you were asking, was there still laws in the kingdom? So to understand that God is a God of laws, he operates with laws and we operate with laws and for or, order for us to uh, uh, relish in the kingdom of God that we, there are certain laws that we have to uh, abide by and adhere to, such as uh, follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are under the law of liberty and life in Christ, the spirit of liberty and life in Christ Jesus. Uh, so I think there there are laws that we have to adhere to. Yes, well, we're still here, but we are not definitely talking about the Mosaic law. So I, that's that's all I got, bro. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. And uh, brother Greg G, you were able to to actually come in. So thank you so much uh, for joining us. And what I asked was, as we're trying to uh, get make our transition. And I said out of, I don't really know if we'll be able to transition out of any of this, to be honest with you. Uh, the way that I received it is that these things are building blocks. They're all very, very vital and essential. And you heard me refer back to many of these things as we're moving forward, because some of the concepts that we're going to get into tonight, just initially, and then as we are moving forward through this stewardship, without some of these foundational principles, we, I will say one thing, but you will hear another. And I've said it before, but it's a case where God is speaking in a language and oftentimes we're hearing something else. Even though God is saying something very plain, we're hearing something else because someone has taught it in a, in a way that may not be within his doctrine, his, you know, his, his precepts. And, and that's a very challenging thing, again, for God to say something for us, for us to hear another. So I don't I know that that was not a waste of time. I know that every time that we spent, you know, even the lessons before that, they're all vitally important because some of these concepts, they're still very difficult for me to grasp. Even the God will, will speak it to me, reveal it in my heart. <laughs> I had to go back and listen to the message like five or six times. Like, man, do I am I hearing you right? Like, am I understanding you correctly? You're right. Just just making sure, because I'm telling you, this stuff is really just sh shaking me up in a lot of ways. So I want to see uh, brother Greg, if you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but did you have anything you'd like to say about that uh, becoming a law abiding citizen in the kingdom of God? Either way, it doesn't have to be anything that you are celebrating, you know, or confirming that you agree with it. It's just anything you'd like to say as far as what you got out of uh, that, that session that we did in becoming a law abiding citizen in the kingdom of God. No, I, I think the only thing I would, share on it is uh i think minister winfield mentioned something along that line is just following the leadership of the holy spirit you know i can't do nothing in and of myself apart from god uh, the spirit of god enlightened me to the things of god as i you know keep my heart open and uh and tune to the spirit of god and allow him to lead me and guide me in all truth I, the only thing i really have in, in in the matter is a choice you know the spirit deal with me when i make a choice to obey the spirit of god then he would enable me to uh, carry out you know the, the will of god uh and so i i think it's just so important as a law by the citizen in the kingdom is just you know keeping a heart staying humble because god resists the plow but keeping a heart in tune to the spirit of god that the spirit of god can lead me uh you know there may some me some time the way i may miss it miss it you know but that don't mean i'm to 
get mad, quit, and give up. You know, I just need to continue to keep my heart open to the Spirit of God so he can, Jesus said he would send them to lead me and guide me in all truth over in uh, John chapter 16. And as I follow the Spirit of God, the Bible said there's no law against righteousness, and Christ is our righteousness. And as I follow the Spirit of God, you know, then, you know, I'm he is leading, leading me and guiding me in all truth. Uh, that's all I can share. I'm too, Brother Corey. Before we, before we move forward. Yeah, I'm all good. Right. I'm through. Yeah. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. I just want to see, is, does any anyone else have anything they would like to share before we move forward? All right, so good stuff, good stuff. Again, you feel free at any point uh, to be able to share uh, if you would like. Uh, this is just, it's just, uh, man. I mean, I literally, if I can be very open and candid with you, uh, it was two o'clock today uh, to the point where I, I really didn't know. I'm like, I, do I continue to move forward? Uh, I really don't know how much of this was grasped and taken in. Like, should I continue to try to build upon this when I don't know if these seeds that actually sunk in? So I, I was almost at the point where I thought that I needed to take a month off, right, or a couple months off just to pull back, uh, just to allow some things to sink in and to, to you know, just to let it be uh, whatever it needed to be. Uh, and it wasn't until two o'clock. And I, it just, it just, it's, it's just like it was with becoming a law abiding citizen in the kingdom of God, just like the parables of Jesus Christ, just like, you know, every other thing then it was clear. Uh, I got a lot of peace and it was like, you know, just, okay, let's, let's move forward. So with that being said, uh, some, some major points I'd like to make sure that I, that I share uh, as we move forward. Then one thing is to realize that uh, I'll, I'll say God specifically. Okay. I was going to say in general, but God specifically gives or provides law as a demonstration or a revelation of his love. Now, the, the challenging thing about that is, is but it, depending on what uh, experience that we had with law, right, or authority in our past, that could be very challenging, right? So the, so, the, so the thing is, if I have a very negative experience with authority and law, the last thing I think about is love, right? So if I had parents or grandparents uh, that scalded me for reasons that I didn't even know, right? I, were, I was uh, maybe abused, right, by, by family members, and I didn't even know why sometimes, right? Or maybe you had a, a, a very uh, challenging experience with law enforcement. Uh, there are times in history, obviously, where there has been some some bias, you know, from, from law, uh, law, you know, from law um, uh, authority, right, law enforcement officers, right? So maybe that was, it was not just, right, enforcement of law. So it's a case where in those cases, maybe we could develop an unhealthy um, experience or idea with law and authority, right? So and, and no difference with anything else. For me, what I had to do is initially early on and dealing with my relationship with God is I had to allow him to redefine love, right? Because many of the times that people said they loved me and did some of the things that they did, it was not a demonstration of agape, right? That was not the agape of God. I didn't know that, right? But but as I began to meditate on and seek the, the the what God said about his love and actually allow that to be demonstrated in my life, I realized that wasn't love. But I had to actually ask God to be able to reveal his love to me. Yes, God is love, right? But again, we can have some different language or idea of what love is if we're not careful. So as it concerns this law, then understand that God provides it to guarantee success. I've said that before, but I, I just want to make sure that that's so plain is that he, he cannot guarantee success for you or anyone else without law. It's impossible, right? Even if we could hit the target, we wouldn't know how to hit the target again and again and again, right? There wouldn't be any consistency. And there's that protection, right? We, we can compare maybe ourselves as parents possibly, or if we have good parents or good grandparents, we could possibly compare them but but to really understand that when I in my own household establish law in my house, I'm not doing it because I hate my kids or I dislike my kids or I don't want them to have fun. I can't keep them safe. Right. I can't provide any consistency. I can't protect them if there aren't certain things that go on. So I establish those things because of love. So the law is established in response or, or as a fruit of my love. And it's the same way with God. So. If nothing else, when we're uh, on our own, <clears throat> again, continuing to go into into just just understanding God's law and those types of things, understand that it is God's 
uh, only motivation. Right. God doesn't have another motivation. His only motivation is love. So we have to be able to 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 get that established first. Why? <laughs> the biggest thing is that it may hurt. Right. So when God chastises us, it usually is with his word and it doesn't always feel good. It is correction. Right. But it always is for our benefit and it doesn't always feel good, especially if we're in the wrong. Right. If we're misaligned with what God has for our, our life and the will that he has for us. It may not feel good. It may not be that exciting. Right. But the reality is, if we always understand that God's only motivation is love, we, we not only will accept that correction, but we will seek it. Right. And that's what this process has been done, been doing for me is I have been seeking it. I am looking for God's will, looking for God's law through Jesus Christ, looking for the statutes and commands and commandments of Jesus Christ. I'm looking for those. I'm looking. I'm asking now. Right? I'm asking Holy Spirit. Correct me. Right. Reveal your law to me. I'm looking at the words of Jesus Christ. I'm saying, wow, I didn't know this was law. Can you help me align with this? Right. I'm not trying to get it to align with me. Can you help me align with this? So that was something that was that was absolutely major. And then one of the other things as we move forward is I was having a conversation with Emerson and I didn't ask this during any of those weeks. But it was the first time that, that it really hit me is that if I were to ask a majority of, of people, uh, you know, believers that have confessed hope and faith in Jesus Christ under whatever denominational, you know, uh, idea uh, that they have. If I were to ask that individual um, under this new covenant, right? I believe that we all would agree that there is a new covenant in Jesus Christ, right? If I were to ask that individual under this new covenant, is there law? Then I believe there would be some peculiar, you know, the kind of looks that, that we would get uh, and, and again, like Emerson said, and I realized the reason why we had to slow walk through that so much is because I myself had to catch myself saying law and, and hearing myself or seeing a picture of the Mosaic law. Right. Seeing a picture of the Ten Commandments. So I'm, I'm not only speaking to those people. I'm saying I'm detoxing or getting detoxed myself. So I had to make sure that I'm, I'm remembering that God is not talking about his. Uh, law revealed through Moses, right? So when I'm talking about this, understand that for the majority of people that would actually hear uh, this gospel of the kingdom of God, those individuals would not come to any connection or awareness with God through a a, a Jewish perception, right? So the Jewish or Jew is a, a religion, right? Or through Hebrew Israelite, which is a, a nationality, right? So most people are not right. Most people would come under the category of Gentile. Right. When the Bible talks about Gentile, uh, they will come under the uh, the umbrella or, or the category of of Greek. Right. Talks about that. Even heathen. Right. C come under those categories. So when we understand that for for what is going on, when a person is listening and if they would hear correctly, there shouldn't be any idea that if I say, is there law in God's kingdom? Is there law in the new covenant? The only thing we should say is, huh, what is the law, right? Not, again, Old Testament, because that's that we're not under that Old Testament reality. So what is it, right? So the, the individual I have to say for most people, they say no, right? Either they say, no, there is no law. Uh, if, if they're honest, right, if they're not as honest, not as bold, they would say yes. But if I were at were to ask, what is it? <laughs> right. I say for most believers wouldn't have any idea why, because we can watch the way we live our lives out and we live very reckless, very haphazardly. And we, when we and we live a life showing that we believe that there is no law, no standard in God's kingdom yet. Right. All throughout the New Testament, we're revealed standard. Right. We're revealed this high standard that we've been given and the equipment that we've been given to be able to, to actually hold that mark. Right. To be what God would have us to be, to be the reflection that God would have us to be. So that concerned me when I thought about that. Right. So I know that it's very important not for us just to listen to those. Again, if you haven't listened to those messages, but but to be able to, again, for your own self to be able to go in and dig this stuff out because I can't give it to anybody. Nothing. That's what I'm learning. 
you have to go in and ask God to reveal it to you. And it's not until God reveals it to you that things begin to sh just really change. Right. In your heart to be able to look at, at the at the words of Jesus Christ and say, my goodness, this is my king. He's sharing with me his law. Right. He says this and that is a commandment. This is not a not this is not a negotiable. Right. I'm not going to act like I'm I'm in uh, some other uh, idea. I, I am in his kingdom. And this is the expectation. Right. And to know that he loves me. It's not a grievous thing. Right. It's not that it is a joy to be able to align with the will of God through Jesus Christ. So those are the two major points that, that I, I really wanted to make sure that we got. And uh, I want to see, is there any comments, any questions as, as we as we move forward for tonight? Yeah. Uh, let me uh, first of all, uh, as you are mentioning, uh, yes, uh, uh, we we understand that I have no, let me just put speak for myself. Uh, if I if I had to ask a question to you, uh, if 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 we have time and if you can and, and uh, I don't want to take up all the time, why is it to, to an individual? Why what what is it? Or let me put it this way: Why is it important that I understand that there are laws in the kingdom of God? Why? What, what does that do to my life? What 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 relevance is it to me to have that understanding? I like to pose that question. If not, if if you can answer it, then please. If not, if we think it'll take you down a trail that you don't necessarily want to go down right now, then we put that off to later. But I just want to ask that. Uh, uh, I I know the answer. I mean myself, but I think that if if you could put a maybe just a little uh, layman's answer on that, why is it important? What does it do for me to 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 know that? Well, I mean, you know, how relevant to you? there's. A lot of things going on in my life today. I think these are questions maybe that people may have. A lot of things going on in my life today. A lot of tragic events happening in the world and and uh, all type of stuff going on, lawlessness and lawlessness and and and, and all these type of things. And so, what 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 is it what is it going to do for me to to find this out? I mean, what what what's what's, what's the benefit behind it? Uh, so that I'd, I'd like to oppose that if you have time. If not, then continue on what you're doing, and maybe we'll talk about that some other time. But uh, that's what I like to uh, ask, Corey. And to continue, and you know what we're what we're learning about. And again, I said the law provides security; it also provides some protection. And I don't know anybody in their right mind that would not want to know uh, what the doesn't want to be successful, right? There's tons of books that are written, laws of success, and all these types of things about success. And, and, and there's millions of copies of these books that, are, that are, are written, all types of seminars, all types of things. People are looking for these things in all different places, right? So people want to know how, how can be, and also the other end of it is the protection side. And I don't think that anybody really wants to destroy their own lives or have things that come in that will hurt themselves or hurt their family. But sometimes we, we act as if we do, if that makes sense. So the importance of it is to understand that outside of the, the laws that God has established for our success and for our protection, then we don't have it, right? And things just don't work out. We may not make that connection. We don't know why it's not working out. We don't know why there's so much harm and destruction coming in our lives. But that's the reason why, because we're ignorant. Right. We're void of that information. Even when we uh, we become somewhat aware, meaning that we've seen a scripture or a body of scriptures, then if we don't see it as being a non-negotiable being a law, then we won't align our lives with it. So we won't get any benefit of it. Like, what's the point of knowing something, you know, as far as head knowledge wise and, and not seeing as a, as a principle and a law that that is established? And I'm saying this has to manifest in my life. I have to get on the right side of this or it's not going to work out for me. Then it should adjust. So. That's one thing. The other thing is, to, to, to be totally honest, um, so when I look at the kingdom of God, then 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 the government, again, I, I shared that, that term, but understand how important governments are, okay? So when we understand that uh, no, no, no government, okay, and even no kingdom is a physical thing, the territory is physical, right? The people are, are, are is, physic uh, is physical, the resources are physical, but but the kingdom and the government are are ideas, right? And they manifest in people. So a king can have the idea or the ideas, and he allows that to go through the people, and he expects that to manifest through the people. And then we see it, and we say, "Oh, kingdom, right?" Or whatever the country is, we can see the president and the different 
branches or the different you know things that they have put in place but these are ideas so the type of government is very important so when we understand that there are different types of government okay and in this one it is a case where the type of government is a kingdom why is that important all of our ideas come from one source it comes from the king so when a person comes into a country or to into a territory if you come in as a visitor i said this to you emerson but we don't understand this you can come in as a visitor into the country people come into the united states all the time i mentioned that the gates have been open to mexico right we have millions of people that are coming in from mexico but they have no legal rights right and nothing against those people i have some really good friends that have come that way still seeking uh, uh citizenship in the united states not legal citizens but working here providing great value right to our country but the reality is and i've shared i've had that conversation with those individuals they don't have they don't have any rights <laughs> do you understand so to come into a kingdom or into a nation and you're traveling visiting or you come in illegally whatever the thing is you don't have any rights so it doesn't matter how much you meditate on the on the commandment or the constitution or the laws of the country listen you don't have any rights right and for a person that is a citizen in the kingdom or in a kingdom or in a country or in a territory or a nation here's the greatest thing i think in the united states that people really need to understand we have a, a group of people right in the in the united states uh who have been here for some time yet have not taken advantage of the things that are here as as a, as a group right there are individuals but as a group have not fully taken advantage of many of the things that are available here in the united states so you can have people that will come over from other countries and they'll be here for a short amount of time start businesses right have all types of entrepreneur types type things going on and and have a lot of really good things that go on in their life right why because those people are in with a mindset that they're going to take full advantage of all the opportunities that are available in this kingdom they gain their citizenship first and then they go about taking full advantage of everything so the way that i make that comparison is is that we have people that have confessed hope and faith in jesus christ but have no idea that they have uh, accepted a citizenship into his kingdom so we ignore law totally ignorant of law right either totally ignorant or, or ignore it and it's sad right to see the results of what's actually going on in our everyday everyday lives only because we just won't take advantage of it right we have the rights <laughs> right we're, we're actually citizens, but we don't take advantage of it again <clears throat> it is about is it is according to law so for an individual that's here as a citizen in the united states but specifically as an example you can violate law and lose most of your rights right you can go into the prisons and jails you can see people that have lost their rights to vote lost all type of rights right you're a citizen but you lost your rights why because of violation of law and there are many people that i'm telling you it could be me it could be you in different periods of our lives that we have violated law and we didn't realize that there was something that just didn't work out in our lives and we forfeited some of those benefits just because we chose to be uh rebellious right or out of ignorance we became rebellious so uh to, to make a long story short it's a case where it just turns the light on by understanding of the kingdom of god understanding what god's will is understanding really seeking how this thing is established and what that government is it is the type of government is a kingdom but understanding what that government is the governor the holy spirit he he governs everything but there are laws that, that allow him to be able to govern right i think we are acting as if the holy spirit is trying to govern outside of law no government no country no nation no kingdom they ain't gonna do it doesn't mean doesn't make sense you can't you can't govern without law right so the holy spirit he is the governor but he is governing according to the laws of god right and by being ignorant that there are law or is law and we just totally missed it and we'll be very resistant to the what we should bring us and guide us into the areas we should go in because we're just totally ignorant of what god wants and he's established in his word not just word in general again looking at the sayings of jesus christ the doctrines of jesus christ the commands the commandments of jesus christ he's, he's established the holy spirit is going to help us navigate through those things and lead us into that 
But if we don't have any awareness of any law, it's, it becomes very mysterious, very shaky, right? It, almost, it absolutely is a miracle if it is working in any area of our lives. And I think that's what we see. And that's probably longer than what you was expecting, but I hope that makes sense. And you can add anything to that that you would like, or anybody else can add anything to that they would like. I just want to say uh, thank you. And I think uh, I'll break it down even more uh, to a more simple terms. Uh, what type of society, what type of kingdom, what type of nation would it be if there was no laws? Simple as that. It's that simple. If there was no laws, and over in England, where England, where the queen has died, now they have a king. I wonder if there was no laws in England. I wonder if there was no laws in the United States. I wonder if there was no laws in, in uh, uh, Japan, you know. A lawless society brings nothing but chaos. So God being a king, why would it be? Everywhere else there's been laws established. Why not? And where do you think that came from? It came from God establishing his laws of his kingdom. And for us, like you said, to for our protection, for our benefit, to profit us in every area. I know the thoughts in the, that I have towards you, and they are good. And so without laws, I don't think a God would be a very good God. I think things would be chaos. So, yeah, thank, thank you uh, uh, for that. Thank you. Awesome. Anybody else? Any comments? Any questions about that as we, as we uh, move forward? Hey, Brother Corey. Um, hey, listen, um, I hadn't been able to comment most of as I kind of transition, getting in the house and so forth, um, I guess it it really um, strikes me that as we try to define the kingdom of God, that um, a simple statement, uh, he is God and beside him there is none other. And to realize who God is, is to realize that he in his essence is law. There's, there's, there's nothing to dispute him. There is not, no one beside him. There is no power like him. And I, I think that's important for us to know for as you, a number of reasons. Um, one, to know, as it says in Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19, he is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man he, that he should repent. What he says, he brings to pass, and what he speaks, he makes good on, because once he said it, it is indisputable. It It is forever settled. It is irrevocable. It is inalterable. It is forever settled, as the Psalm says. His word is forever settled in the heavens. Um, and I, I think as you were just talking about, it helps us with our sense of direction. It helps us in our exercise of faith, um, and our dependence upon him, because I think sometimes in our nation, particularly where people are so enamored with the idea of their freedoms that people look at things and say, I will or will not accept this. Um, and, you know, embrace the idea that, you know, government should not be in my business, should stay out of it. I, you know, there, I'm not trying to be political here. Uh, but if you transpose that idea over on God and try to relate to him accordingly, then suddenly you have reduced him to being less than God, the only true and living God. And, um, and so, you know, out of that, it says in Ephesians 1, that he works all things after the counsel of his own will. And so he does not consult what people think or have to say about what he says and how he works. It is according to his own will. Now, 
thankful as Brother Emerson was just saying, the thoughts that he thinks towards us are good and not evil, to prosper us, never to harm us, to give us a future, give us hope, to bring us to an expected end. So I think that the key in this you know, becoming a law-abiding citizen in the kingdom of God is that understand that God is the final authority. And uh, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because he has already demonstrated and proven uh, what his attitude towards us is in that he didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us. And so uh, to embrace his authority, uh, that he is God and very God, and there is none of the like him, is then to say, okay, he is the final authority. And, you know, as we talk about the kingdom of God, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I often say, okay, let's help, help us translate the kingdom to our lives. What what does that mean for us? It's, it's his government, it's his influence, it's his way, uh, it's his culture, it's his way of thinking, uh, it's his way of doing and being right. It is all of his character, his nature. Uh, and so he becomes the source. He's, he becomes life itself. Everything originates with him. I say this finally in two places, both in Romans 8 and in Romans and Galatians 4, it talks about how he sends his spirit into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And I believe he does so because as you translate that word Abba, you know, it's translated in different ways, but ultimately it means source or origin. And so it is to see him as the beginning of all. Everything comes from him. And so, you know, when we resolve that in our thinking and thoughts, then we can we can relate to him and we can see his kingdom because we understand that he is the final authority. He is the supreme ruler. There's none else beside him. His word and whatever he says is law there's none there's nothing to dispute or resist it that's it that's it that's so spot on and i just appreciate uh you you sharing that because that's what i really am trying to get an idea like what are we grasping and that shouldn't be that hard what, what pastor mark is saying well, that should be a very simple thing but it's not because we, we come from all these different mindsets and these different you know, experiences and all those types of things. So it, it has been very challenging for us just to accept that reality and that simple thing that Pastor Mark said about it. And if we can get to that place, none of this stuff will be hard. And uh, uh, Emerson, do you have something you wanted to say? Or, or Brother Greg, do you have yeah. something either one? I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say, yeah, uh, as Pastor Mark so eloquently put that and, and spot on that if, but what has to happen first is we have to get this, this, this old wine out of this, this, you know, this old wine skins. It says, how can you put new wine in the old wine skins? And that's what religion has done. Religion has caused us to think that we have a say so in this matter. As Pastor Mark mentioned, as we look at things because of where we live at, it's really hard for us because we don't live in the, in, 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 in a, uh, you know, like England, where there's kings and queens, we live in a, in a democratic society where we have a vote on everything. And so that's what we've come up. We come up in this area. We, we This is what we've been taught. And there's a vote. You want to call in and you want to uh, have a conference on uh, should we do this or should we do that? Let's take a vote. Let's let the people decide. Uh, and so that in itself is challenging to anyone who lives here specifically in America because of that particular uh, atmosphere and, 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 and society that we live in brings these type of thoughts to us. So if we take this into want to operate and understand the kingdom of God, man, man, you're looking, you, you got double trouble, brother. You know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to talk about a king and what he says, go, and there's no discussion. And, you know, you mean we can't take it back to our denomination and, 
we can't vote on this and 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 and, and let's separate God from you know church and state and all this nonsense that you know w- w- that people have come up with, and so we have this way of, of being taught that way. We've been taught that way, brother. We make decisions, as, as I think the word was mentioned tonight. We have freedoms, and, and we want to. Uh, here lately, in the last couple of years, they're talking about uh, uh, defunding the police, the very law of, of that 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 holds this country together. The police, let's defund them. So you get that way of thinking. You know what I'm saying? That that carries over here. Well, we don't. Let's try to uh, defund God, but through our own things. You know, th- these these are these are areas that uh, that we are t- that you you and me and anybody else will be tackling when you start talking about laws of God, because we want to compare God and His kingdom to the United States from where we're from. So you know, you're looking at uh, uh, bless our darling little hearts. You know, bless our darling little hearts. That's why we have to have, that's why God said, my people perish from a lack of knowledge, trying to compare the two together. It's like comparing oil and water. There is no comparison. And that's what we find ourselves doing from time to time, wanting to take a vote or let me think about what the king has decreed. I'll think about that. It doesn't really fit my uh, fit my lifestyle. It doesn't really fit the way I believe because I have freedoms and have rights and don't you dare impose on them and so this is the mindset that we have so unless our mind begins to change as jesus said repent change your mind the first thing he told us was to change our mind you can't keep thinking the way you're thinking you can't keep operating the way you're operating why because there's a whole nother government here and if you don't change your mind you're gonna have a hard time trying to grab a hold to any of this that they're talking about, that I'm talking about, that I've bought. Change your mind. The first thing he, he told us. Awesome. I know uh, Pastor uh, Burroughs has to jump off here uh, at any moment now. So feel free to say any closing things if you would like to. If not, then we'd love to have you. Thank you so much uh, for contributing. We just appreciate everything you're doing. And Brother Greg G, I see that you're there. I just want to see, this. is there anything that you guys would like to say before I actually uh, make any comments? You know, I, first of all, you know, God is creator. And Pastor Bird touched on a lot of that. And so, and he's a righteous God. So the standard of right and wrong lies with God, not with man, whether they're a believer or not. Uh, <laughs> because he is creator. Now, whether they adhere to it or whether they accept it, that's a whole different story, but that still does not change, you know, uh, uh, God, because he said, I changed that. He was saying yesterday, today, and forevermore. So he has not changed. You know, I look at society today, you know, and this is a ever-changing society. The standard of today is different from the standard yesterday. What was the standard for yesterday? And it changed so much that you know it's it's hard to determine what is right and what is wrong if i go by society standards uh you know i thought about something that uh this this dialogue jesus got into it with Pilate, and and and, and uh jesus said he was bad witness to the truth and Pilate said what is true you know we got this new generation today uh and everybody has their own truth uh <clears throat> That's that's why there's a lot of stuff is going on with the millennium. But we who are in the body of Christ, what we have to realize is that our standard and the world standard is two entirely different standards. You know, God's righteousness and the world righteousness is two different things. Jesus uh, put the parallel between the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. He said, except your righteousness exceeded theirs, and their righteousness was a self-righteous, and our righteousness is Christ. And so we 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 in the body of Christ operate on a whole different standard, and I think uh, it, it's been mentioned, you know, through religion and through a whole lot of other stuff, you know, uh, lies have entered into the church and have uh, uh, through tradition, a man that made the word of God and none of it. And so, but the standard of God still doesn't change. <laughs> Because Jesus said, I ain't going to judge you. He said, these words that I speak to you, they're going to judge the last day because God's word is still the same. You know, so when it comes to being a law-abiding citizen, 
in the kingdom. I have to understand that the scripture said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every way that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I, regardless of what the word world says, it's what the word says, you know, and that's what I have to align myself with. And that's what God is going to be looking at. He, be, he said, I require obedience, not sacrifice. I could do all this other stuff. It don't make a hill of beans. God said, I require obedience, not sacrifice. And my obedience is me making the choice to obey the Holy Spirit as he lead me and guide me in the truth. Because, you know, I need the Holy Spirit to enlighten me and reveal it to me what is truth and what ain't true. Because the scripture said there's a way that seems right to a man, but then there's the ways of death. And if I don't be careful, I could be running around thinking I'm doing the will of God and not be doing the will of God. That's why it's so important to be in tune with the Holy Spirit so he can lead me and guide me in all truths. You know, and 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 that is God truth, not man truth. Uh, and the Bible tells me, you know, I'm to hear to the laws of man as long as it's not contradiction the laws of God. The Bible says, let your soul be subject to the uh, to the higher uh, uh, authority. And long as that authority is not contradicting the word of God, then I'm to uh, o o obey the laws of the land until it gets me to try to. Uh, uh, go against the word of God, then God authority is higher than authority, then I'm submit to the higher authority. You know, so we in the body of Christ, we need to understand that regardless of what the world is doing, that is not our standard. Christ is our standard. <clears throat> I'm through. Awesome. And thank you so much. Pastor Burroughs had to jump off of here. So great having him. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Greg G. And it's just, just understanding that. And it's one thing, again, to have a knowledge, right? An awareness. It's just information. Information don't mean anything. It, it, you know, be thankful if the information is true, if there's truth in it. Be more thankful if that information is the truth of God, but that still won't carry us over. God never meant for it to carry us over. It is uh, the application of it, right? It's the revelation or the revealedness of it that the Holy Spirit will bring that allows me to be able to be intimate with that reality and make it my own. And I should align with it, right? There should be application. Wisdom should be manifested in my life. There should be action. It should be fruit. And then understanding should come, right? It shouldn't be no problem with understanding. Why? Because we should have experience with the, the God's truth that has been revealed to us. So it's a case where when we're dealing with these things, it, I really do believe it's, it's just kind of separating. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it, but it, it, it provides some type of separation. So we we either going to do it or we ain't right. All that lip service is it, just it's just over. Either we abiding by the laws of the kingdom of God or we ain't. And I'm telling you, I truly believe for any of us or those right people that say, you know what, I, I, I don't care what you know, what government or country that this physical body was was born into. I was born from heaven. My citizenship is 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 from heaven. I'm a heavy end, right? I'm from heaven, right? And I'm a I'm a I'm a uh, what's it called a heaven heavenling, right? They like say earthling. I'm a heavenling, right? And and it's a case where when I get that mindset, you like listen. I, I don't care what they're doing. I get that they say it's okay, but they're not my standard. This is what my king said about treating people. I'm gonna do that. This is the way he says I should deal with money. This is the way he says I should deal with relationships. This is the way he says I should deal with my physical body. Like, I, I, I'm I, not on none of that, right? And it should be an entirely different influence that we're under. Emerson says it all the time, but that is our standard, our model, right? So I, I appreciate, again, what Pastor uh, uh, Burrow said, and that is just the reality of it. And uh, one thing I thought as both of you were speaking was this. Uh, we think, like Emerson said, we can vote people, you know, vote God in and vote, vote God out. Right. Or we can vote his ideas in or out as if he's asking for our opinion. I can't think of any place. Right. I thought about Adam when when, you know, it, it went down and they they were put out of the garden. God didn't ask for a vote. Right. And, and many other cases in the Bible, when things happen, God didn't ask for a vote. It's not a vote. So for somebody that wants a board. Right. And people think about boards. Yep, There is a board in heaven. Right. You want you to know who the board of heaven is? <laughs> the father, the son, the Holy Ghost. So if something's going to go down, that's who he's going to consult with. That's going to be the board. He's not going to call you or I or anybody else into that meeting and ask our opinion. That's not the way this goes. So either it, we will align with the, the, the truths that God has established in his son, you know, specifically in Jesus Christ. Again, there's there's tons of truths and nothing against the rest of the truths. But again, just just honing in and focusing on what what Jesus Christ brought. And what he actually is trying to make sure he's establishing in this kingdom 
then uh, it, it's going to benefit us. If, if we misalign with it, it has hurt us, right? I'm just going to be honest with you. We may not realize how much it's hurt us because we're so ignorant of it. But for those, it will be apparent to everyone else. Listen, this gentleman here, this woman here, they're under a whole different kingdom, <laughs> hold on, a whole other influence. Things just work out for this person, right? Th I mean, I've never seen anything like that. That should be our common expectation. So just wanted to make sure I could say that. Uh, I'm going to make sure I'm ending this It's 804. What I'm going to do, the way I'm going to end, I'm going to share two scriptures, not going to get into unpacking those scriptures. Uh, this is a great transition. So thank you so much. I really uh, appreciate us being able to transition out of that and get into uh, the stewardship piece. So getting into what we're going to be going into, the, the title as of right now it will be effective and efficient stewardship in God's kingdom. And I'll repeat that and we'll we'll break that down next week. But effective and efficient, right? Those, those are two different words, right? Effective and efficient stewardship, another word in God's kingdom. And all of those words have a tremendous amount of meaning and it's, it's meaningful for you, not just in general, you specifically, you individually. This is what should we should be having walk out and manifest in our lives today and every day in our lives. And this is the, the grade. If you want to think about a report card that we would get, this is how we're, we're graded. Whether we view ourselves as stewards or not in God's kingdom, this is how God is, is grading us. We're getting a grade whether we realize it or not. So uh, the first scripture I want to make sure that I'm leaving us with, and I'd like for you again, meditate on this and, and, and be ready next week so we can, we can get into this. But look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 5. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse number 5, it reads, um, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Don't miss this. And there was not a man to till the ground. Right. So this is a very important part. I think that we miss out on. So the way the way I shared it with my wife was this. Either I'm going to agree with God and his precept his reality or i'm going to be wrong and i'm tired of being wrong so for people to want to argue about the age of the earth and how old humanity is and all those types of things here's the reality is that god made earth for man and it was desired that man should steward over what he created so what sense does it make if we think about it that you can have a world about an earth that could be created for millions of years without man that's insanity right that 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 don't make sense why because it's for man and 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 god says here specifically in five that it wouldn't grow what 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 are the plants and the animals and, and all the everything and, and on earth going to do if nothing can grow right because he held it back because there was no man to what till it be responsible for it to be a caregiver over it right does that make sense so you understand again that's one way that we can make sure that we just start to dig in. So look at that. I want you to meditate on that uh, during this week. There's so much that we can get into with that. But understand that God desired a steward. <laughs> that was his desire. That's your role, whether you want to fulfill it or not. He desired a steward to steward over this realm. That's your responsibility, whether we know how to do it efficiently and effectively or not. That's our responsibility. Right. And the other scripture I would like for us to make sure that we look at uh that we can meditate on again and be prepared for next week is uh go to luke chapter 12 and uh it is actually verse number 42 and it's loaded it's one little little bitty scripture phenomenal right and loaded when we start to really start to dig into what god is expecting from you right again your report card, right? <laughs> My report card. This is what God's expecting from us. So this is what it says in Luke chapter 12, verse 42. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful, right? Powerful word. So go break that down, study that and be prepared because God's expecting that from you, expecting that from me. Faithfulness. What does that mean? How does that work out in my life? Am I found faithful? Will I continue to be found faithful? So this is a, these are uh, characteristics of what he's looking for. Faithful. Also wise. Right. And we keep passing by wisdom, right, to go chase money. Right. And I don't know how many Proverbs always talks about how much higher wisdom is than gold, silver and rubies. Yet we chasing money. 
But it, it, again, we see wisdom showing up again and how God is expecting his steward to be what? Faithful and to be wise. And to see again, this steward, this is what God is calling you, calling me in his kingdom, right? And uh, it says, whom his Lord shall make ruler over uh, his household to, don't miss this, responsibility. Why? Ruler, not just to put yourself up and feel big and bad about yourself, but why make you ruler over the household? To give them their portion of meat in due season. That's a responsibility, right? So it's just so much that we can get into. Okay. And I, I won't, I won't go further so much. I would like to be able to say, I'm not going to do that right now, but again, uh, meditate on those two scriptures. If you get any more, bring in, you know, um, uh, uh, more witnesses, more, more scriptures so we can really dig into this, but to understand that God desires stewardship. He wants a steward. That's what he desired. Ad he placed Adam in the garden for that reason, right? Things didn't happen the way that God intended. No big deal. He had a, he had a, he had a plan, brought Jesus Christ back on the scene to bring the kingdom right to allow this great kingdom to manifest so that that stewardship responsibility to come back into the hands of his kids powerful right powerful stuff so with that being said thank you so much uh, for your attention and your time i look forward to seeing you on another reunited again where our goal is to reunite the body of christ with the gospel of the kingdom of god have a good night